Hello. This is a patch with two voices playing relatively complex complementary melodies, but I'm not using a dedicated sequencer module to drive them. Instead, I've patched up a sequencer from scratch using a couple of voltage controlled switches, a couple of clock dividers, a matrix mixer, and a quantizer. All I need to feed in here are a simple steady clock and a fixed offset voltage, and I get all this loveliness out. I've just added some very simple drums separately. Now, I've done a lot of sponsored videos recently showcasing modules for brands, and I still enjoy doing that, but I don't want it to be the only stuff I do on the channel. The plan when I started out was to explore patching techniques and ideas, and for a while now I've been planning some videos like this one which get back to that approach. They'll be less about specific modules and more about approaches to patching, or patch programming if you like, that you can replicate with your own building blocks. Because for me, the great joy of modular is using simple universal functions to design little systems that feel like they're more than the sum of their parts. So if that sounds good, stick around. I'm going to pull everything out and show you how I built this sequencer patch from scratch. Okay, so that's everything unpatched. Um, I've kept the voices semi-patched. They're kind of the less relevant bit of this video, but I'll just quickly explain what they are. Um, up top, I've got the Danny Sound Kali oscillator, which is a Buchla clone that's running through the Make Noise Optimix. And I've got an envelope from ALM Pip Slope um, to open Optimix. I've also got an LFO just from the new systems quad LFO controlling the wave shape on the oscillator so that will move between a sine and a squarish kind of tone. Really simple voice but it sounds quite sweet. Um, second voice is Nano Rings, just the 8HP Rings clone down here. Nothing fancy going on with that, that's just running through the Olivia Arts Time Machine delay um, which I'll keep dry for the time being. They're both going straight into the computer or I'm going to add a bit of reverb. Um, but basically the meat of this patch is the sequencer which is patched from these utilities here. And I have to admit, I kind of got the idea for this patch. I've been playing around with a few different combinations of these modules and playing with some you know, ideas for sequencing. But there was one particular thing in Monotrail's recent video about creative sequencing patches, which is great if you haven't already seen it. Um, and there was an idea in there about using, instead of what I normally do with a sequential switch, which is feed four different offset voltages to the four inputs and then step between those at the output using the trigger. So we're basically making a sequencer using offset voltages going in. Um, his approach was using a single offset voltage to the common input and then routing that alternately to the four outputs and then feeding those four outputs into a mixer. And that gives you a four-step sequence where rather than needing four offsets at the input, you can attenuate that same offset at the different channels of the mixer to give you a four-step sequencer. Um, and I'll show you how that works in practice in a second. I'm using a matrix mixer rather than a conventional single channel mixer for this, which means we're basically going to get copies of those four outputs of the switch going to each of these four, uh, each of these three columns rather. This is the AI Synthesis AI008, which is a four by three matrix mixer, four inputs, three outputs. Um, but what that will do is give me the the ability to create three separate four step sequences, and these attenuators will adjust the voltage between the full voltage of the offset voltage coming in, which is about four volts I'm going to send in here, uh, and zero. So you can basically you know, choose a CV value with those pots effectively. Um, let's start patching up a bit then. I've got a clock coming in from PAMS, which I'm just going to put into this malt, which I'm going to send to a couple of places. Um, I'm going to use a Dopefer A160 to clock divider to control a few different things on the patch, which I'll introduce in a minute. And the heart of it is really this Dopefer A151 sequential switch. Um, as I mentioned, the AI AI008 matrix mixer, uh, and I'm also going to use a dope for A150, which I'll introduce in a second. That's a, just a simple voltage-controlled two-channel switch. Um, so the idea is the clock will come in to both of these modules, the uh, sequential switch and the clock divider. So they'll be my kind of, they'll be clocked from the master clock. The input of the sequential switch will come from this offset voltage generator, which is the Nokia Circuits Opal down here. So I'm just going to send in approximately four volts into there. And then the four outputs of the switch will go into inputs one to four of the mixer. 
like so. And then when I start the clock, you'll see those four LEDs there on the four outputs of the switch. So as each LED lights, that voltage from Opal, which is about four volts, as I say, is going alternately into inputs one, two, three, four of the mixer, which means that if I adjust the pots on the mixer, at each of the three outputs, A, B, and C, which are relate to the three columns of pots here, we will get a sequence of control voltages. Now, you may notice I've got three of these outputs and I've got two voices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the second switch to turn these two four-step sequences into one eight-step sequence. So the way I'm gonna do this is outputs A and B go into inputs one and two of this dual voltage controlled switch. Uh, which means that basically those two four-step sequences are going into the two inputs. And then I'm going to take a divide by four from this clock divider into the control input of that switch, which means it's going to alternate between four clock pulses with that output A being sent through and four clock pulses with that output B being sent through. So we're getting an eight-step sequence effect through there. Quite a good technique for turning a short sequence or multiple short sequences into one longer one. Um, so that will be the sequence that's going to feed voice one, which will be the Kalios. So I'm going to go into the first channel of my quantizer. I'm using the tenderfoot quad quantizer over here. I'm just going to use two channels of it. It's a really simple one. Um, I really like using this because it's, um, yeah, you've got the little keyboard buttons at the bottom right, which mean you can very quickly set a scale. Just got it set to a minor pentatonic. Um, and then, yeah, the output C, so the third column, that will go into the second channel of the quantizer. It's a bit of a forest of cables here already. Um, and if we get these pitch sequences going into the two voices and turn them up, we'll start to hear something. So let's take the volt per octave Kaliosk from there, CV output one, and let's take the volt per octave of rings, which I've got here. CV2 and let's take the strum output of rings from the trigger output here so basically whenever this value changes it will send a trigger and likewise I'm going to get my envelope triggered for the first voice from the trigger output here and let's just start with the Kaliosk voice and if I start turning up some of these steps and start there adjusting the wave shape which is why it's kind of fading in and out of those sign let me just turn that down a second turn that up so we can hear that a bit more clearly so yeah we've now got an eight step sequencer so far so straightforward let's just turn that down a second and let's have a listen to the rings voice which is going to be fourth, or this third column rather, and of course this is just four steps. So a four step sequence is quite boring, especially at this tempo. So the other main idea with this patch was to use a different set of gate patterns to trigger these voices. Let me just stop the clock a second. And so to do that, I am going to use a second clock divider, which in this case is the wrong divisions from Fancy Synthesis, but you could use another A162 or any other clock divider of your choice. What I like about this is that I can send different combinations of these divisions to the, the bus outputs here. You could do that with a conventional clock divide using an OR combiner, so you would maybe send, you know, the divide three and five, say, put them into a combiner, and then it will combine those and give you every third plus every fifth clock. Um, so I'm going to take another output of the master clock um, into here, 
and I'm going to take a divide by 8, uh, or a divide by 16 in fact, um, from, well, in fact no, a divide by 32 I'm going to take from the clock divider to reset this. So every uh, 16 bars effectively then that will that will reset this. Um, and then, yeah, let's get, we'll take bus 1 to trigger the Kaliosk, so I'm going to actually just go into the quantizer trigger and similarly bus 2 I'm going to go into the quantizer trigger there. So basically whenever these clocks now fire that will sample and hold the voltage at the input and it will also fire out a trigger from the output to trigger the voice. So just sticking with the rings voice I've got this set up to take um, a divide by 5 and a divide by 8 clock routed to that second bus. So we now get a much sparser pattern. And for the Kali oscillator voice I've set divide by 3 and divide by 7. So a combination of those two is coming out of bus 1 and that will trigger sending a reset every 32 steps. It never gets too out of hand. We actually get a pattern that repeats because we're starting the clock again each time. And now to make the patch a bit more interesting, the other thing I was doing was using R&D step to generate some random voltages. So let's take the rings voice triggers here. And now I'm taking a couple of bipolar random voltages which are triggered on every note of rings and they're affecting the brightness and damping. And similarly, let's take a trigger every time the Kaliosk voice fires into the bottom channel here. I'm going to take a unipolar and a bipolar these to randomly affect the attack and decay time of the envelope. And now let's bring the wave shape down again and bring in that LFO modulation. So we've got a lot more dynamic interest happening. And yeah, that's kind of it, the only final bit of variation I added was taking another clock division from my master clock here, the divide by 64, and going into the octave shift on the quantizer. So when this light goes on, we go up an octave. So we get a couple of bars up an octave, a couple of bars down. start bringing in some delay on the rings voice as well. I was doing this little, little tree ratchet style delay here. What's also quite nice about this patch is this one knob which is controlling the single offset voltage that's going into the switch. That lets you control the range of the entire patch, both voices, if I reduce this. range. As I increase it, you can also play with sending continuous clock to one of the voices by flicking the switch here. Quantizer, you can be, you don't have to worry about setting these 
values too precisely, you can just play around until you get something that sounds nice. And with this kind of complex rhythmic action going on, although they're basically an eight step and a four step sequence, it sounds a lot more complex than that. So yeah, there you go. Let's just bring the drums back in. Hopefully that made sense, and hopefully you got some ideas of things to try. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my other stuff, leave a comment, share, tell your friends about it, and let me know what you think. If you've got any other ideas for these kind of techniques of your own, share them in the comments. And I'll be back soon with more stuff like this. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.